Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, I'll be showing you guys how to make a vehicle in Blender 2.8. So first, you're going to want to head to the-blueprints.com and you'll pull up to this page. Then the next thing you want to do is hit vector drawings right here and then you'll be moved to this page with a bunch of car blueprints. Some of these blueprints won't be as good. So like, let's go to, for, for example, let's go here and then let's go to F-Type and then the coupe. And this it looks really good right now, but this is this is such a new blueprint. So when you try to get it for free, because they have a way you can get it for free, I'm not sure if they're doing this purposely or not. But you hit you right click it, and you click inspect, and then you click on this, and it'll say this page will is the page you were looking for could not be found. That means this blueprint isn't be isn't able to like get for free yet. But but you can pay for it if you'd like, which is 20 euros or 13 credits, which is 13 credits is cheaper. And yeah, so for this video, we'll be doing a Honda Civic SI. So you just go here, Honda Civic SI, and then it should come up. And then we are doing the Honda Civic SI Coupe. And right click, and then you inspect it. And then you go here and click on the thing, and it should be, bring up the blueprint. So what some of my friends do is they actually go and crop these things out. But honestly, you don't have to do that, so I don't crop it out. I just save the image. And then I go to work in progress cars. I have a bunch of files here and I just type new folder. Honestly, you can save it however you want. I, I just feel like it's more convenient to have everything order, organized and go like 2019 Honda Civic SI Coupe. And after you do that, you just like open it wherever, wherever it went. And you just save this image right into here. So that's how you get the blueprint online. Some of these blueprints, like, they might not look good because some of them were designed by different people or something. I don't, I'm not sure how they do this, but that's, that's a good blueprint in my opinion. This looks pretty nice. All right, guys, so we're going to be in Blender now. And when you first open Blender 2.8, you're just going to see a cube, a light, and a camera. So honestly, you don't need any of these. So if you hit, if you double tap A, that should select everything. And let me turn it on so you can see what I click. Alright, now at the bottom right you can see what I'm hitting now. That if I hit A twice, it'll uh, select everything and then you just hit delete on your keyboard. Or if you don't have delete and you're on a Mac or something, you can just hit X and that'll delete. Next thing you'd like to do is go Shift S, which will bring, like it'll say menu to adjust this cursor. And you do cursor to world origin, which puts it right in the middle of all the axes. Then you go to front view and you do not want to be in perspective view. As you look in the top left here, it says front perspective. If you hit 5 on your numpad, that'll put you at a front orthographic view. And then now you can zoom in and everything, and everything is like the same, basically. And then Shift A, which is to add a new mesh or something. And then you go to Image, and then Background, because we're going to be setting up the blueprints here. And then you just navigate and find where your folder is at. Mine's in Don't Delete, and then <laughs> uh, Work in Progress, Cars and then 2019 Honda Civic SI Coupe and which is right here so right now it's really bright and you you won't be able to see this when you actually build your vehicle so I just go here I just make sure the front view is selected then I go here and I click use alpha and change the opacity to 0.5 so now you can see through it a little bit and then since we are on the front view we're gonna use G and X to move this blueprint over and we would like to center it to the middle of this Honda logo. So let me just zoom in and move it a little bit more. And just make sure it's centered on the car. Sometimes cars don't have logos in the middle and they'll just be random. And then now you you now you would hit G and then Z so you can move it upwards. So you get the red line on the tires. So all these blueprint views will be aligned later. So there we go. We got the front view done. So now let's move to the right side view. So hit number three on your numpads, which will move you to the right orthographic view. And then do Shift A, Image, Background, and the image again. You use the alpha 0.5. So now what you'd like to do is see this blue line. This blue line should be with the farthest most part on the front bumper. So just move it like that, and then zoom in. And I'm using G and Y to move it left and right. Zoom in like that and click, and then make sure it's aligned there. And then also another thing, if you don't like doing that, you can use you can go to the left side of your screen here. And you can click on the move tool and you could use this, but I think it's less convenient because I don't know, it's just, it's just less convenient for me because I'm used to doing it by G. But yeah, you can also do that too. So G and Z to move it down or the move tool and then 
Make sure it's just pretty close. It doesn't have to be like perfect. It's gonna be a little bit off. But the more perfect it is, the better your blueprint will be. Closer, likewise. So we got the front and right view done. Now let's move to the top view, image, background, and then the coop. And if any time you accidentally like left click like that, you're gonna have to do Shift S and cursor to world origin, or the blueprint will actually be placed over here, and it'll be kind of annoying. So now use alpha 0.5, and then this is special because that's the top view. The top view is look like, looks like this, but I do R90 then R180, and then move it back over here. And make sh I like using shark fins sometimes. Sometimes shark fins are not accurate with the car, but this looks like it's in the middle of the car. Yeah, it looks like it. The Honda logo back there is pretty closely aligned. We got these three views done. So now we go to the back and do the same thing again. Background image. Use alpha 0.5. Now we just do what we do at the front, but with the rear. So we're gonna need to move this up by G and Z and then G and X to the middle again. That's not the middle. There we go. Now we just line this up with the Honda logo and the thing. And there you go. We got all these blueprints done. So now you're going to be like, this looks like a real mess of blueprints. And yeah, I don't like to d build like this. So what I do is I take this one, G and then Y, and I just keep moving my mouse to the edge of the screen. It should be placed really far away. So it doesn't interrupt me, but it'll still be there. And you only can move them on these axes. Like you can't move uh, the top one on this axis, or it'll move it away. So you have to move it straight down for the top one. And then for this one, the side view, you need to move it just straight to the side. And then for the rear view, you're gonna need to move it like all the way that way. Cause you can't move it left or right. It'll, or that just scaled it by accident. But you can't move it left or right or it'll mess it up. So you just gotta push it back. And there we go. Now we have a clean workspace-ish. And all of our blueprints are put far away. It doesn't really matter how far they are because it's orthographic. So when you do it here, the, you'll still see them the same amount that you would see them like in an orthographic view. Because orthographic view, it'll keep the same amount of distance no matter how far you are basically. So shift S, center, just to make sure it's in the middle. Now you do shift A, mesh, and you do plane, which will bring a four-sided like square or whatever but it's not 3d it's just flat so now you just select these three vertices and the edges and hit this move tool so you can see them actually and I just hit X and then oh yeah to select is uh, shift and then right click either shift right click all these three and then X and then delete them I only leave one and then with the one I have left I go towards the vehicle I just start wherever I feel like I want to start like right now I feel like I want to start on the headlight because I feel like it'd probably be the easiest. And then you just do a good amount of vertices. Make sure when you do this, you don't do vertices like like four here and then like that. Because that's going to create improper like edge flow is what they call it. And it also can cause some waviness. Like watch me if I just put it here. Watch how it'll look compared to the rest of the car. I'm not, I'm not put, like putting that much effort into moving these down, but... It'll look really like kind of wonky and wavy if it's like that. If I just move it here and like sort of mess it up because you're not going to have the best of hand when you first start out, but no one has the best of hand. You just go, you come back and you fix everything. So yeah, just delete that and make sure you create, create like a proper amount of distance between each vertice. So as you can see here, I have this amount and this amount and they're all pretty much the same, which is something that I see most beginner blender modelers not doing. And yeah, it, cr it can mess up your model really badly. But in some areas like this curve, you're going to need to put some a little bit more extra vertices, but still not that amount I showed you earlier where it was really close together. And then you just go to the front view after you do the top view and you just move these down and align them up. So some blueprints on uh, the blueprints will be really inaccurate and you'll have some problems doing them, which is kind of a pain. But I mean, you can always just start out with the easier car and make your way and to a harder car. So as you can see, I'm just gonna make all everything here rounded. Even though it's more t topology, but that's really, it's it's like for straight parts, you don't need that many, but for curves, you need a little bit more, which will help your car look really good instead of like a low poly like thing you'd see in like jailbreak on Roblox. So yeah, oops, I hit control S to save it. We'll do that later. So now you're, you're probably wondering why 
it hasn't mirrored to the other side. So we are you like wondering if we're doing both sides? No, we're actually not gonna do that. So go to this wrench tool right here. And you click add modifier. Then you find the modifier under generate and scroll down or look, move your mouse down and it'll say mirror. And then now it's mirrored on both sides. So you don't have to build both sides by yourself, which is actually very convenient. And then you click clipping. And when once you clip it, if you go to the left here, you can't move it back. It's like they're all they're glued together basically. So yeah. Next thing you do is continue just I'm just gonna continue down the headlight. Which is like just finish this headlight area up. Then we can move on to the hood. Just make sure you have proper edge flow, which is what's this called. And since we're doing a non subsurfed model, subsurfing is when you make your car sweep around. And it's not really efficient for Roblox because if you do that, you're gonna have to import your car on multiple different pieces. And it's just really a pain in the butt to do. But it does make your car look cleaner. Because it'll be like rounded like an actual vehicle is in real life. And you won't see as many like vertices. Which I mean by like it won't be as sharp. Everything will be rounded. I'll, I'll demonstrate it in just a second. Let me just move these vertices down real quick. Okay, so I did that probably because I had two vertices there because it actually moves in words according to the blueprint up here and Oh, yeah, so blueprints aren't always a hundred percent accurate. You're gonna have to remember that some blueprints might be missing details So I'd like to use this uh, program. It's called pure ref and With pure ref you can actually see Pictures and everything. So let me open pure ref up real quick Okay, so here's pure ref. There's nothing here. Just drop some images to get started. So first what you do is open Google and then I like to go to caricos.com. It's a pretty cool website where they have a bunch of like, I think, press pictures of cars. And then let's just search Honda Civic SI Coupe. And it should come up here. See, this is the exact car we're looking at, actually. You just click on it and now let's go to the front. So as you can see, we can see all this grill and stuff like this well, plastic part around the grill and all this paint and everything and we can see all these body lines that come down which is actually very helpful so what you do is I click the gear right here and then the size 2560 25, by 1440 and copy the image and go back into peer ref and then paste it in and then once it's in peer ref what you can do is zoom in like this and it's very helpful when you're like trying to look at like a crevice right here or something like that or if you're trying to look I just say it a body line. It's you're, you're like, oh, it ends right there. Well, well, if you're out here, it's harder to tell. Stuff like that. It's very comes very handy. And now let's find a little bit more, uh, more pictures, and I'll see if it actually indents over there. So let's get like a little bit of an overhead headlight view. Um. Okay. So yeah, if you're looking right here, let me just save this. Once you do it once, if the gear doesn't reset itself, so it'll say 2560 by 1440. And now we can see there's actually, it's just straight. There's no indents like this blueprint's telling me to do. So then I just go back and it looks like, yeah, it's just straight. So I just align it up. And we can get rid of this vertice by de delete key or the X key and edge, not edge loops, not edge collapse, dissolve vertices. And the vertice gets dissolved and you don't have to see it anymore. Basically, it's just gone. And now just just go off and make sure everything's rounded off and you don't have any like weird edges that are sticking out which get kind of annoying and boom uh, I think this kind of looks like a Mercedes EQC right now but I mean that's just me Mercedes EQC I think that's what it's called yep <laughs> I think it looks like that but yeah some sometimes cars will look weird because you don't have anything done yet. But yeah, so let's move on and now let's start on the hood. So let's open PRF again and let's get some more pictures from Kari Coast about the hood. And make sure some of these pictures are going to be hard to see because the lighting's bad. So just find a nice picture. We actually got pretty lucky on this car because this car has a lot of pictures about it, which is really cool. Now we can go and zoom in and now we can see this body line that goes through, which will be located on the car like right here. And we can see that. I, would, there's, I think there's two. Let's find some more pictures. Uh, 
Okay, so here's a here's a pretty good picture actually. So we can see how there's like a line going through and there's like a crease under it, so it's like someone folded it. And they merged back together up here. So let's look on the blueprint and see if they did that. The blueprint didn't merge them together, but I mean you can do that too. They'll probably that's probably how it is in real life. It's harder to tell with a picture than go actually see the vehicle in real life. So you just go like this, this, and don't worry that I'm not going the same amount of vertices here. We can always come back if it doesn't look good and fix that up. But since we're converting it to the hood, uh, I wouldn't recommend going to do that. So just do this and boom. Make sure you have good edge flow on the hood because at the end, you're probably going to come back and merge some vertices. So you don't have like extra topology where you don't need it, which will save some triangle counts. And that's very helpful. Oh yeah, so if you do control shift and B, that's how you bring out more that's how you bring out more vertices from a single vertex. And you can use your scroll wheel to oh my god, I just did that. <laughs> you can use your scroll wheel to get how many you want. I'm just gonna put two here. And now it's rounded off. And yeah. Sometimes you're gonna have to go off the blueprint because these blueprints aren't very accurate. And if you just freehand a little bit, honestly it's gonna be really hard to notice. It'll probably look better at the end. Because it's not really flat on most of these cars. So there we go. We got that part done. So now I'm just going to look at the picture again. I, I like looking at pictures a lot. So we can tell all the sharp lines. And you can see over here. You can see the line kind of going through. So we'll do that again. So let's. If you select two vertices by shift and right clicking. And then hit F. It'll make like a sharp thing. So you can just make that mark that sharp. And everything here is actually going to be marked sharp. So select everything and then mark it sharp. And that's actually pretty helpful. So I do have a different blender theme. I should, have guys, I should have told you guys at the start of this. It's a normal blender theme, but my vertices are white. So if you'd like to change your vertices, I'll show you in just a second. You can make your blender theme however you like. I keep trying to save it. So let, let's actually first go to 29 Honda Civic Coupe and name this whatever you want. I'm going to name it. Honda Civic SI Coupe Blender uh, blender file. Actually, no, it's gonna be Dublin anyway, so it's fine. So now, yeah, let me show you guys how to make the vertices white. So edit preferences, and then go to themes and go to 3D view, and click on vertex. You can make it any color you want. I keep mine all the way to white because it's really helpful. Because I don't really build many cars that are white, like on the blueprint. I don't think I make that many. That's white, but you can honestly make it a very different color. I want to make it orange, or I would not make it uh this type like sharp blue like baby blue or whatever cuz those will interfere like so, I don't even know what color that is to be honest with you but yeah just make sure these are lined up properly so when you you so later on actually I'll just do it now normally I do most of my vertices first and start filling the car in but for demonstration purposes you can select two and then make that and then if you select four you can do that but see how we have all this topology set up, right? So you can just select these two on the side of the square because it's already there's only one, one square. There's already one square there, and an F F F F. That just filled it in for you basically. And you can, if you do it pretty fast here, so right here, it's gonna make a quad. So I don't know how that'll look. So just what I do is make sure, as you can see, like everything right now is flat shaded. So select everything and then go to mesh and shading and then smooth faces what I did was I right clicked it and I added the shortcut for myself and I did B so when I whenever I hit B on my keyboard it makes everything smooth oops so yeah let's let me show you guys what HDRIs are if you go if you hit Z and go to material preview and go over here into the top right of your screen click here and then you can see many HDRIs I like using a custom one that I installed from HDRI Haven or something like that that's a pretty good website I like using it's called Urban Street 0316K HDR. So let this open up. Sometimes it'll take a while when you're first opening it up because it's a 16K file. And now you can actually see it open. So I do a negative. I don't know. Actually, I don't know what rotation I use. But right now it looks really weird because it's flash shaded. So we're going to be trying to aim for a red. So hit, select all of it. 
click on the materials tab in the bottom right new and then now you can see a material uh, double click it to name it like red paint and now let's try to duplicate this color as much as we can it's like a medium red kind of it's not like too bright but it's like it's it's still very bright I don't know how to explain it then you just turn the metallic all the way up if it's kind of metallic and the clear coat and then now you can like see it as would be this color is more like a cloudy day but this is more like I think it's like a Roblox HDRI in my opinion like a Roblox Skybox kind of but I like using this one a lot so right now it won't look like much but yeah now you go to the if you go to the solid view and then click it here and then you can go on matte cap which I like using a lot so what I did was I got all the 2.79 matte caps and I put them in 2.8 so like this one this is my favorite matte cap to see shading errors you really can't see a shading error there but since it's a triangle if you make it a quad by doing alt and j it'll actually hide more shading errors than a triangle because triangles like to do sh uh, shading issues sometimes issues with shading and yeah Roblox will automatically convert our model to a triangle and there's no way to stop it but I still like doing that so to make it look better in blender and then let's go down the hood here proper edge flow and honestly no one's gonna look at this much like curviness so you can go pretty like long on these vertices because it's a long thing it's gonna save you some edge loops so now let's go back to the blueprint and let's see which one we're doing since we did the inner one the inner one stays farther down so I'm just gonna I think that's, that's the top vertice right there so I'll just keep it a little bit lower actually here's a better idea instead let's just uh, redo this oops sorry I just hit my mic there let's redo this and let's do the outside one first because that's going to be easier because then we can just extrude it down which I'll show you how guys how to do in just a second let's go down real quick and if you guys mess up don't be afraid to restart like I see a lot of people being scared they don't want they're like oh I just I just, I just spend like two minutes on that or like ten minutes on that and I'll and I don't want to restart it and they're just gonna be like the kind of lazy but yeah if you really want your models to look good and you really have the time to do so just just restart them if you feel like it or just like re redo the part or refinish it because it's really gonna make that difference for your models and then after you do that you do shift and D or you can use the extrude tool but I'm gonna do this and then you just line it up and you just move it down a little bit and as you can see here the front view isn't accurate with the back view okay so yeah I went to pure ref here and it's telling me to save it so save it and then name it oops that's not the right file go to work in progress cars and then Honda Civic SI Coupe boom now it's gonna save a little bit it might take some time because these are 4k pictures but these go here and like that actually I think what I did was I went off the wrong line the higher line is that there's another line on the side of the car so I'm gonna actually lower this side a little bit to match with the front view because the front view is accurate probably it probably goes that much down so all of this is going to need to be lowered by quite a bit boom perfect ish obviously blender is one of those things that requires a lot of patience to learn and to get good at it you don't get good at something on your first try you have to try and you, you just don't give up on blender blender will treat you well if you don't give up and now we go back here and then we just go down the vehicle and we're going to be doing the sharper line of the side of the car. Make sure when you do this, you try to follow the, the side of like the, the headlight topology as much as you can. So at the end, you can just easily go like boom, boom, boom. Instead of going like, oh, boom, oh, no. <laughs> and then put a bunch of triangles. But yeah. Continue down this hood. And we got that much done so far. So now let's try to align it with this vertice. It's, I think it's higher than that by quite a bit. So just it's harder to tell here because there's no blueprint, but you just have to kind of yellow it in freehand. Or like it's missing. So it's like what I mean is like it's hard to tell where everything's at because it's really like dark and everything. There's so many lines there. So just follow the picture and it's like freehand it kind of. And then now we can fill this actually in, and if you look back at the pure ref. You can tell on the inside it's more like a smoother thing and the outside is more like a sharper thing. So mark this one sharp and I'll show you guys what to do on the inside in a little bit. So now see how we have a flat shading. Mark everything smooth. 
And now this is how it looks with the HDRI. This is how it looks with the MacCap. And let's find another picture of that car, actually. I just want to make sure something on the hood is right. This looks like a really good picture, actually, for when I wanted it. Okay, so it looks like the blueprint was correct. It curves in a little bit, and it, and it stops at the end. It doesn't, like, stop right now, so that's good. So now, let's go to the view. Let's go to the PRF again, and now let's just see one more thing. So as you can see, it kind of, like, comes in at the middle of that, what I'm getting to see. Like, it's not really perfectly flat, that corner, so we're going to be doing this again. So go like this, and let's fill this. Oops, I just did something by accident. I actually I hit E, and I left click it or right click it. So put it back there, e and then right click, and they can move it from there. But yeah, I'll just fill this in real quick, and boom, like perfect, like that. Go to the front view. Yeah, it's gonna be off a little bit. These blueprints aren't the best because they're not OBJ blueprints, which mean like they're actually taken off a real car. These are just drawn by hand. Like, so yeah, they're not going to be 100% perfect, but you just have to deal with it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first fill this in. And I'm going to have some triangles, but triangles are okay. It's just not supposed to be used all of the time. Tri quads are better than triangles. And then end gons are vertices with like, are tri like triangles. What do you call it? Are polygons with more than like four vertices. So now I just put, move that down a little bit, and that's creating some shading issues. So why it's doing that, I'm not sure, but let's just, let's, we can fix that by moving it back up a little bit. And boom. And then now you can just fill it in, and in real, reality, most shading errors you see in Blender aren't going to come into Blender, or aren't going to come into Roblox, because the Roblox is ancient, and it's not like how Forza is, or Forza Horizon is. It's a lot different than like many other uh, game engines. So yeah, let's see how that looks. That's, that's creating some issues there, topology-wise. And I think I know exactly why it's doing that. We're going to need to go here and click on this green triangle and then go to Normals, Auto Smooth, check that, and turn it to 180. And then now that's fixed some of our problems. Actually, that's fixed quite a bit of our problems. So now we can actually go back to here and move this a little bit more down. Because it's not perfectly flat on that. At least on the pictures it looks like. It might be. But yeah. But we got that so far. I think it's looking pretty pretty nice, pretty nice. Just move it back up a little bit. A little bit. And now we can see this whole line comes through like that. Very, very nice. And Oh, actually, I, I just realized I messed up. I'm going back to the car here. And let's see this again. The one on the inside is the one that's more up, and the one on the outside the more the one that's more down. So what we're going to just what we're going to do here is select that and then mark this one sharp. And then we're just going to move this one downwards. And this one back upwards. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to bevel this uh, line down here because it's actually not, there's some of like a crease to it, sort of. So select down here and then just control B and there's a bevel. And I'll just create a bevel that big so there's like a little bit of a crease down there. And it looks like that. It looks realistic. And then the rest of the hood is actually very simple. So what I do is it's E and then X and then X. And then align it to the middle. To make this straight, I just do G twice and lock it into there by left clicking, and then actually that doesn't work. But now we can what we can do is select this and then select those two, select both sides of the vertices, and then do bridge, edge loops, which will do that. And now we can do Control R and we can just scroll up on our mouse wheel to add these. And we only need three. You can probably pull off less, but I'm gonna do three just for that extra detail. And then do that. And now what we can do is. I'll line these up by moving them up because this hood is it's raised a little bit as you can see in the background and boom and see so about a sharp line here just select that and unmark it sharp and then we can come back and just fill this in really really quickly I 
let's see what's happening here. Okay, so we need to do that, and then at last. Actually, no. Select these, and I'm just do remove edges. And then fill this back in, and then do that. And then... No. Alright, there we go. Boom. And now I just continue down this headlight, and let's just fill this in a little bit. And looking at the headlight, it's not perfectly smooth. If you look here, let me find this picture. Um, if you look right here, you can see how it's not exactly straight. It comes in a little bit. So what we'll do is go back to here and then go through here. Boom, 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 boom. And move it to the middle-ish. And then just push it in a little bit. And now we can see like we're getting the intended effect as it is right there. Let's continue down this and finish this front fender off. Boom. So now we can see we're getting into some interesting topology or interesting like body lines of this vehicle that we're going to need to do some interesting topology for so let's just do that make sure it's round like that this really reminds me of the audi ttrs i don't know if you guys see it but i think this car kind of looks like it for some reason so let's go back here and it's not really even so what we're gonna do here is do that and then move it up a little bit select these sides into each side like that and these have the same amount of actually no these don't these don't these do not have the same amount of vertices we can get rid of one of these to make it the same amount. And then boom. So they have the same amount in vertices. Now we can select both edges. And then we can do this cool tool, cool tool by hitting spacebar and typing grid fill. Which will fill it in for us, basically. And mark that sharp for this part. I forgot to do that. And boom. That's looking pretty nifty. I'm having some shading issues here. I'm not sure why that's happening, but let me look into that real quick. What I'll do is actually make this into a triangle and do that. And then make another, like, get this into two triangles and do that real quick. Boom. They're still causing some shading issues here. Hmm. This is the one thing with Blender, you just have to mess around with your shading and I'll fix it eventually. Sometimes you might just have to redo this whole piece to fix your shading problems. But here, here's how the color looks pretty far so far. I think it looks pretty nice. So let's go back to the picture and see, see why it's doing that. It c it's probably because this square is too long of a square. So let's leave that part for now and let's look at this other part of the vehicle. See how it's like kind of curvy and let's do that part and we can focus on finishing fixing that in just a second. So go like here, select those four, do that. And what I'll do is I'll use two vertices because this car is, it needs two because it's that curvy. And now we can just continue down because it is such a long slide. Uh, polygon square thing. Fill this in and two again, and then just move it in a little bit. And the lower one comes in a little bit more. Boom, boom, boom. And then, yeah. Now we can have these actually figure out two right here and move it out like that. Which fixed their shading here pretty much. And let me let me get this card in a different color because I think red is just a really good. It's not that good of a color to like demonstrate. So let's go to Hun. And there's so many colors you can use: Rally Red, Platinum White, Asian Blue. I think Asian Blue is actually a really good color to demonstrate this, which is what I did actually. Just go blue and turn all the metallic up, which I already have done. And yeah, now you can see a lot more. And now I can see actually looking at it. Now it's kind of wavy here. That's what happens sometimes when you do your vertices, they're, they become wavy. 
Just go back and you just fix it. And boom. There's some like shading things going on here. But honestly, you're not really gonna notice that. Let's go to the blueprint or the picture again. And let's look at it. So now let's actually do the, this part right here. There's a line that comes through and it goes back there. So what I'm just gonna oh I, I forgot how to fill this part in. But there we go, fill that part in. Perfect. Now the line that comes through here, so I'll just extrude this and move it down a little bit. And just alignment, alignment it with the back. Now go to the top view and just move it out and align it with this. And boom. Perfect. Make sure it's marked sharp, which it already is, so we're good. And smoothing it out. And it looks like this continues. Let's see. The line goes through here and then it just ends like abruptly. Like right here, this blueprint's kind of inaccurate, but just go through here. I think it ends. It ends like right about here. Whoops, that's gonna create some weird. Cause when you extrude, it's just gonna leave a flat line, which is very interesting to deal with. And boom. Which will end like that, and I'm gonna continue actually, and I'm gonna some topology going here so we can fill this part in and I'll just have it end right there it's okay if you do some triangles like that but as you see what I did there I did the same thing again and you just come back and hit Z and then go to wireframe to fix that And then like that, boom. And that's not sharp, so oh see how it's like dark here. Select everything, control V and and then make sure everything's smooth and control not control N. Control no shift N, which will fix that for you. Boom. So now let's do this like fog bezel like fog like bezel thing. So that looks like it just comes straight down from here. And you just go back and align these up. And then what you can do is, because it's not the emergency together, because the line like goes back there, hit M, or no, Alt M, and then last. I have mine set to M because it's really just convenient. You can go to, to your user preferences and set that up. And then mark the sharp again. Let's go to the top view and just align us up to that fog light bezel thing. Blender is very nice to use when it's quiet. Or <laughs> not quiet when you're playing music. The line just goes like that and fades into the bumper. You're seeing here, I'm having some like issues with this topology right here because I'm trying to make it as flat as I can without having like a hump. Because when I moved it up like that, it was creating like a hump. Yeah, I do not want that currently. And just go down this fog light thing. And yeah. Don't get frustrated if you don't do well on your first time again, guys. Obviously, it's a pretty difficult thing to learn. And card modeling is one of the difficult thing, the hardest thing to learn on Blender. So yeah, don't fret. Boom. 
So now you guys are probably wondering, how do we make a wheel well or something like that, like the wheel trim thing or the around the wheel. I like to put it in the middle of the rim and then zoom out a little bit. Shift A, circle, and it should become a 32 circle vertice. I leave it and I just scale it in. And Honda does their wheel wheels really interestingly. So I select these bottom that are parts that I don't need, and I just move it like that into place. And I go to the front view. I go here, I rotate it to the top of the wheel wheel, just align it, and then got to fix it through here. Perfect. Let's look here. As you can see, it kind of like goes in at the end of that. So let's just do that real quick. With the control R and just put a vertice there, boom. And now we can fill this in. And see what's doing that. I did not want to do that, so I'm just gonna put a trim there. Boom, perfect. So we got a, a nice front bumper going for this vehicle. Has some shading things here, but we can always come back and we can put a big triangle, a square there, and. Sometimes you might be able to pull off an end gun. No, we cannot pull off an end gun there. So it looks like we're gonna have to do a triangle right here and then maybe a square right up there. That looks okay. You can always come back and fix it. I'm just gonna leave it for now. I can probably fix it later. And then now let's push this part. Let's do that part. So it looks like just to be extruding. I'm using E and then I'm using S to scale it in. And boom. It looks like these merge together at the end. No, they don't. Never mind. Boom. That's looking pretty good so far. Except it's kind of wavy up here. Let's go fix that. Honda actually made some of this car wavy, so it might be real, but it might not. It might be realistic. No, that's good. That's a little bit about realism. And now we're just gonna go like this, boom, boom, and then boom, 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 boom. Let's go back here and fix that. By using the top view and the side view, because sometimes one of them are not accurate, or one of them aren't just like there. Boom, that's looking pretty good already. Okay, so as you can see here, the blueprint is missing one of these parts. So what I'm gonna do is just move this down a little bit, and I'll, I'll make I'll make it myself. Because blueprints aren't 100% accurate, as I was saying earlier. And then like that, and then move this out. Perfect. Go like that. Whoops. I hit F there and we we're not supposed to do that. And boom. That's looking pretty good already. Let me just go here and use E and S to scale it down. And then let me show you something really neat. It's called a knife tool. So you hit, so you go, let's, let's adjust this topology real quick. So you hit K and you can just do this and you can cut out, like just cut into the mesh. Just make sure you, when you cut it into the mesh, you don't go like boom, boom, boom. So you're like trying to make something like that. That could cause some problems with your topology and make it look kind of messed up. But now what we'll do is select all that F and then go back here and then do only faces so it'll delete some of that. Actually no, that wasn't a good idea. Mark sharp around it. And since it's like since it's yellow, what we'll do is select this and let's go look at the car real quick. So as you can see it kinda like has a edge edge like thing around it, so let's go here. Make this orange just for like reference. And then what they did was they, they came around where Hondo did probably was like this. 
And they control sh control beat it, and then we're doing this. Is how do you do panel gap? Basically, they does small nice panel gap. So edge edge tool up here, and I can select around it, mark that sharp. Let's go here and move it in slightly. So now it looks like it has a little bit of indentation to it, and it's making a shading error happen right here. This is called a uh, I don't know. I forget what it's called, but it's it, no, it's pinching. Let's go here and fix that. Because sometimes when you bevel, it doesn't make all your edges sharp, and that's kind of a pain. Boom. And boom. Whoops. Boom. That's looking pretty good already. Just go back here. Yep. Make sure it's smooth and everything, and yeah. So this is how our vehicle is looking so far. I think it's looking pretty realistic. Except here, something's going on right here. Hmm, let's see how the car is like that. This is too far out, I need to move that in like a lot. There we go. move these out of the way we don't need those and let's come back and fill this in like that boom that's looking great you're gonna have to require patience and make sure you always just come back in and fill all these irregular parts out see it's like moving kind of wavy go back it, it'll just make your final like thing on this like car come out really nicely it's one of the things that I see in the, like it's the hardest thing for most blender models to do is fill this in when they're starting out because they don't realize they have to. And yeah, so let's see here. It actually kind of waves down. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this first video. If you guys would like me to continue the series, I was asked by many fans to do the series and people that I've seen in like Discord servers. So yeah, j join my Discord server down below and ask if you need any help with Blender 3 stuff. Just, um, just type it in general or something. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you guys like would like me to finish this car, obviously, like on YouTube or something, comment down below and let me know why. I understand this video is pretty long. It's actually nearing 50 minutes, like recording time wise. So I'll try to edit this down as much as I can. And I hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys next time. Peace out. Bye.